Hey everybody, this is a great little question from back in 1979 from the AP Physics exam. We're going to look through it today. It has been modified a little bit just to fit our current topic a little bit better. But this is a great question looking at variable manipulation, um, trying to work with a situation where we don't have numbers and just using the physics principles and, and mathematical understandings as tools to help us answer the question. All right, you can obviously read through the question there and, and you can see what's needed. What I'd like to do next is let's just work through it. The first part says find the speed of the ball just after it first bounces off the plane. All right, so in the question, it actually told us, number one, that the ball bounces horizontally off the plane. And it also says with the same speed with which it struck the plane. So we're not having any energy loss. And so basically, if I can find out with what speed it strikes the plate there, then I will know exactly what speed it rebounds off at, at a horizontal direction. All right. Now, this first part should be pretty straightforward. I know, for example, if we look at, you know, thinking about kinematics here, it is a free fall situation from that top point down. Then we can say, well, we've got x naught, x, v naught, v, a, and t. We can solve this the same way that we've solved all, solved all of our other problems so far. And so uh, recognizing here that the acceleration is going to be g, right? They do ask us here to do it in terms of g and h, which means that those are the only variables we're allowed to have at the end. We may put other variables in there temporarily, but in the end, we can only have g and h there. All right, so uh, at this point, we've got the acceleration in there. We are looking for the speed, so I'm just going to label that as V because that is what we're going to be looking for. The initial velocity is zero because it starts up at the top at rest when it gets dropped. It does say it's released from rest there. And so now we can recognize that the position, really what we're going to do is we're just going to find the change in the position here, which is H. And so it's changing from the top to the bottom. It actually goes down h, but the distance there is h. So with the variables that we have, it should be pretty clear that we're going to use the equation v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a x minus x naught. And so we are solving for that v squared. The V naught is zero, so that's actually gonna go away. And then we've got two times the acceleration, which is G times, and here's that change in position, right? It's how has that height changed, and that is H, that's the distance that it traveled. And so we'll be able to take the square root now of both sides, and we know that our final velocity then is going to be the square root of two G H. And knowing that that's the velocity right before it strikes, again, it says it's going to rebound with the same speed. And so this is the answer that we're looking for, the square root of 2gh. So now, given any height, we can calculate the velocity just straight from that. It's not a magical equation. It came from our knowledge of the physics that was available. All right. The next part, part B, asks for the time that the ball is in flight. Okay. So now we're not looking at the drop anymore. We're looking at the point in time when it's flying over here. And so we want the time that it takes to do that. Now you should recognize that as being projectile motion. So we have both horizontal and vertical going on here. So let's write out what we've got. So we've got an X naught, an X, a V naught, a V, an A and a T. All right. Now, what do I know? Well, we just found the initial horizontal speed, right? So we can put that in as the square root of 2GH. Sorry, this is my horizontal information and there's the vertical. So we know that horizontally there's no acceleration as it goes through that free fall, that projectile motion. So the acceleration is zero and the final velocity is also square root of 2gh. All right. Positions. 
we could label this as being position one, right? So position one is gonna be a horizontal distance of zero. Now, the, ho the, the horizontal final distance, well, we can actually get something for that, but it's gonna be in terms of L right now, right? This triangle right here, okay, would show the horizontal displacement though, there. Okay, the vertical displacement would be from this height down to where it strikes. Now they actually made this really nice on us by telling us that it's 45 degrees, right? Because it's 45 degrees, that means that our green triangle here is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, right? That means that these two sides are exactly the same, okay? You could write it in terms of L if you wanted. Hopefully you learned in math class that you can just make that L over root two, and this would also be L over root two. If you don't know that, that's fine. Just recognizing that those two sides have to be the same because it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle is the step that we need to make. Because what that means is that we can now find, if we just for temporarily define this as being X, so it goes from zero over to x, right, up here, from zero to x, then we should be able to set up a formula there. We're gonna go ahead and look at the y values as well because, you know, we are still going to have x there. We don't actually want x, but uh, t is what we're looking for. We wanna have t in the equation. We'll go ahead and put the y values in now. So again, we're gonna say that it starts at zero goes down to technically this would be negative x right because it's going down the distance x that's fine not a big deal the initial vertical velocity is zero because it says it rebounds horizontally so that would be zero we don't know what this is so we're going to avoid that if we can the acceleration of course is uh negative 9.8 so that's g essentially okay and then the time will, of course, still be time. Now, they actually simplify things for us a little bit because they're just asking for speeds and distances. What that means is that the direction really is not important here. And so you'll notice with our Y values over here, the Y values, I've got a couple of negatives there, but that negative X just means that it went down. The negative g just means that the acceleration was down. Because our question is just asking for time and speed, we actually don't need to worry about those negatives. And so we're gonna go ahead and just make this x and g. All right, now you may notice that we still have x and t in there, which we're not really allowed to have that x. However, if we can write an equation for x, we'll actually be able to put those together later, and then we'll be able to solve for t. Watch this. With If we're trying to avoid the V, right, because we don't have that for Y, then we probably want the equation that is X equals X naught plus V naught T plus one half A T squared. So we're going to do that for both the horizontal and the vertical. So for the horizontal, it's going to be X equals zero plus v naught, which was square root of 2gh times t. And then we will add on that 1 half a, which is 0, times t squared, which, of course, these two guys are going to go away. We'll do a similar thing for the vertical there. So for the vertical, we're going to say x equals the initial position plus the initial velocity, which was zero times t, plus one half g t squared. And again, we've got some zeros that are gonna cancel out. And so we initially, we, we essentially have that for horizontal, that distance is square root of two g h times t. And for the vertical, x equals one half g t squared. Now, as we said before, up at the beginning, when we were here, we were saying because this is 45, 45, 90, those two distances, the horizontal distance and the vertical distance, have to be equal. And so we can actually set those two things equal to each other. We're gonna make a little bit more space here. So we're gonna just say that square root 
Oh, sorry, we need to go back to our regular pen here. We'll go the square root of 2GHT is equal to 1 half GT squared. And at this point, we can solve for T. Now, normally, we wouldn't allow you to divide by T, but we're not looking for an answer of zero here, right? The answer of zero is meaningless. We don't want time to be zero. So we're going to say, you know what? Time can't be zero. And we're going to say it's okay to divide by T. We're going to divide both sides by T, which is then going to give us the square root of 2GH equals 1 half GT. And I can then solve for T by moving the 1 half over, by moving the G over. And so I should get 2 square root 2GH all over G is equal to T. If you, if you could rewrite that if you wanted. I think in the AP manual, it takes that 2 and it turns it into a 4 inside the root. And so it ends up giving you the square root of 8 because you have the 2 that's a 4 in there. And then the square root of G will bring this G into the square root as well. And so it'll be H over G. But either one of those is acceptable. I would accept this answer. And AP should as well. So we've got an expression now for time. Woo! That was letter B. Man, now we're on to letter C. So letter C here, letter C asks us to find the distance L. Well, we know the speed. And we know the time. And so with the speed and the time, we can actually calculate X now. Right? We can calculate the distance. So you could use this guy right here. Right? Or you could use this one over here. It doesn't really matter. Either one of those is appropriate. You're going to plug the time in. And once you plug the time in, you should then be able to calculate. So I'm just going to, because I got a square root, so I'm going to use this one so that I can square it. So we're just going to say x is equal to 1 half g, and then that time, which was square root of 8h over g squared. And so x is equal to 1 half g times 8h over g. The g's there, look at that, are going to cancel out. And so x is equal to 4 a. Now, of course, that's just x. And remember that L is the length of the slant there. So essentially, it's 4h across the top and 4h across the side. If you did what we talked about earlier and you recognize this L over root 2, you could just use that to get that missing side. Or you can just do, oops, you can just do 4h squared plus 4h squared equals L squared. And so we'd get 16H squared, 16H squared equals L squared. So 32H squared equals L squared. We do the square root. When you square root the 32, you should get, um, you, you could just write it that way. You could just write square root of 32H equals L or you could pull out the four because that's divisible by 16. So you go four root two H equals L. And so we get there a value for L. Notice that we're still only in terms of G and H, right? We're not allowed to use any other variables. Even the T is not allowed. I have to substitute that G and H in. And all of our answers so far, our velocity up here, our time here, and our L are all in terms of just G and H. The last question is, what is the speed of the ball just before it strikes the plane? All right, so what we need is these final velocities. And you can't just go with the horizontal one. You need both the horizontal velocity and the vertical velocity. And then you're gonna have to put those together in order to get the final velocity. All right, and so we can use this y here, and we have, you know, basically everything that we need. We know that x is 4h, so we could actually put a 4h in there now, which is going to simplify things for us a little bit. And then we should be able to just solve for 
the final velocity there, okay? I'm gonna switch over to a different colored pen so it's a little easier to see. We'll make a little bit more space over here at the bottom. And so we're gonna use that vertical information. We're solving for V. I'm gonna try to avoid T if I can because I don't really wanna have to put that in. And so the equation that I probably wanna use is that V squared equals V naught squared plus two A X minus X naught. The initial velocity of course is zero. The acceleration is G. So I'd go V squared equals two G. And then the distance this time, remember, is this X here. So it's four H. And so V equals the square root of that, which would be two root two G H. So that is the vertical velocity there, okay? And we have the horizontal velocity up here. So to get the final speed, we actually have to put those two together because I've got a vertical velocity of two root two G H. I've got a horizontal velocity of root 2gh, and I wanna put those together to get this final velocity here. So I'll go root 2gh squared, which would be 2gh, plus the y squared, which would be, we actually had that before, the two, sorry, 8gh, and those need to add together to give me my final velocity squared, that final speed. And so we get 10 G H equals V squared. And so our final speed is the square root of 10 G H. And that is the final answer for this quite challenging problem. So I hope that was helpful. I know when you sit back and look at it, you're like, what the heck just happened? But step by step, recognize that we use the same tools we use the same tools to answer these questions as we do the simple ones we start by writing out the information that we have once we know which information we have we choose an appropriate equation and we simplify then we go on to the next piece and we again we write out the information that we have use the information that you have this one was challenging because we did eventually have to do the equating of those two variables the two equations we had to recognize that those two lengths had to be the same obviously they could give us something that wasn't a 45 degree angle and if that was the case then we'd actually have to set up a ratio of those two sides but in this case they were equal we were able to solve for t once we had t that made solving X possible, which made solving for L possible, which then we could use to get both our horizontal and vertical speeds, velocities at the end of the problem, right before the ball strikes the plate again. All right, hope that was helpful and uh, we'll see you next time.